Amen. Hello there. Trust you are keeping well. Blessed be God. We are sharing truth this morning on vital mix. This is coming from John chapter 15, 1 through 5 today. You are warmly welcome to the Really Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adineko. This channel is all packaged to inform and inspire you into the real knowledge of God, rich knowledge of God, and it's being powered by the Pastor Larry Adineko Center for Exaspiration, the place. This is a daily gem devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. If you are fed up with science knowledge and now you really desire revelation knowledge, you are on the right channel. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our glorious God and King, we give you thanks to God for the great things that happened over the weekend. We are grateful. Be blessed, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask this morning again for your help as always. That Father God, there will be both utterance and hearing this morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 15.1 <coughs> I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in me, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Or you can do nothing. If you pause. And then, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. The fact that he calls himself the true vine implies that there could be some false vines. And that's very, very instructive. All this talk about, oh, there are several ways to God, oh, there are several messengers of God, and this and that. He says, I am the true vine. And so um, somebody may come up and call himself this or um, say this or that about himself. At the end of the day, he says, I am the true vine. Whichever one else exists there is not the true one. And my father is the vine dresser. That um, um, gives us a very, very interesting perspective. Um, calling himself the vine is um, <clears throat> some form of metaphor or allegory, if you like, of the church. And then he says, my father is the vine dresser. He is the one that, uh, that dresses, that prunes, that... Um, cultivates that manages that handles and all that uh, this vine which is the church hallelujah <clears throat> so the father is the vine dresser he says every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away every branch in me he, that bears fruit he prunes that he may bear more fruit you have to have a little bit of an understanding of agriculture to understand what they call pruning that's the way you cut <clears throat> Some aspects of a, of a plant of a tree that is growing in some direction to conserve the energy or to use the energy for fruit bearing for all for, for better things than just uh, length and, and and leaves and all that um, that's what the, you know happens in agriculture so this is done so that uh, the plant may use the energy or the resources to bring about fruits. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he actually removes uh, so that the, the, the sap and the resources from the branch, from the stem, from the main aspect of the tree can go to productive ones rather than just having some branch that would not bring about uh, anything. He removes those ones and then it, it goes and, and then every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, he, you know, trims and cuts so that he can uh, bear more fruit. Um, Let's skip for now, uh, verse 3, and go to verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, and that can you unless you abide, abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. You abide in me, and I in you will bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I want us to compare this to verse 2. It says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. In verse 5, it says, He who abides in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit. In other words, being in me 
and abiding in me, that they are not exactly the same. If you are truly abiding in him, you will bear fruit. You may be in him without abiding. That's what it, impl- it, it implies there. It says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit. This one says, um, if you abide in me and I in you, yeah, you, you will bear much fruit. So you see, that abiding, tell union, uh, that's where some other uh, version puts it, in, in vital union, that's a connection that allows a, f- a free, unhindered flow of sap. Um, that is um, a little bit beyond connection. There's some form of um, uh, interaction, intercourse, if you like, whatever, between that branch and the stem that brings about, that secures, that ensures, yeah, better word, that ensures that fruiting will take place. Whereas what we see in verse 2, you find uh, um, the branch can be in me but does not bear fruit. So that, that branch in me that is not bearing fruit is not existing in that vital union, that um, exchange of, of, of the necessary nutrients and necessary um, resources is not taking place. That um, connection and interaction and uh, um, let's call it inner, in, inner blending. I'm sorry, I just lack words to describe what I, what I want to pass across this morning. Um, it's not really there. And so that person doesn't really bear fruit. And that, it gives you an idea of, of some people who are in Christ, who are, are born again, but they're not growing. They're not producing fruits. And you remember in Luke chapter 6, talking about uh, the, the parable of the sower, you know, it's, it's something like that is there as well. It is possible to be in him and you are not bearing fruit, okay? And that means you are not really abiding in him. So it's, when you are abiding in him, certainly fruit is going to happen. So that abiding in him implies that you are not only in him, you are so in him that he is in you and you are in him and there is a blend together that is... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's some form of mixture of internal uh, things, you know, between you and this Christ that is leading to uh, bearing fruit, getting better, becoming more and more like Jesus, um, exhibiting love, being able to walk in love, walk in 1 Corinthians 13, being able to do things in such a way as to make God happy, and things like that. Whereas, if somebody is in Christ, he also bears a Christian, is in Christ, and he said to himself, he's in me, but he's not bearing fruit. Such people can be taken away. Honestly, um, it looks a little bit harsh, but it's not impossible because you see the bible says in the book of hebrews it says for the earth or for the for the herb which often being watered uh, does not bring results for the person who is watering it it says that it is um is nigh unto burning who the, whose end is destruction it's all in the bible so some of these statements are very very heavy and they are not things for us to take lightly they are there as well and we should know that um we should ensure that we live uh, fruitful lives by the grace of god but it comes by being inside you know christ the way i've described here well by the time we get to verse seven i'm sure we can have a little bit more to say in that direction very quickly let's go to verse three now you know we skipped verse three the other time you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken unto you you will remember how in um, chapter 13 when he you know he says that you are clean except when Peter says, wash my head, wash my body, wash everywhere, says you are already clean, except at the feet. And we are saying that this is what happens when, you know, you are in Christ. The word of God has changed your life. You are clean as far as he's concerned. But you see, your feet gather dust here and there. You're saying something similar here. You are already clean because of the word that I have uh, spoken to you. And then he went to verse 4, abide in me and I in you. You know, um, just what we said in verse uh, verse 5 the other time abide in me and i in you as a branch cannot be a fruit of itself unless he abides in the vine that abiding is the is the big word here that's what makes verses 4 and 5 different from verse 2 in verse 2 every branch in me 4 and 5 every branch that abides in me and i abide in you there is some form of flow you know <laughs> both ways you know that would bring about that will ensure fruit bearing and i think uh, this is wonderful. We are going to come back to it uh, again. Um, uh, we'll just close it at verse 5 today and then we'll overlap. By the time next time we come into John, we'll overlap and then go into 7. All these things have been wrapped up together very, very well. So let's uh, round it off here. So 
uh, Monday and I trust that by the grace of God, you're going to have a great work week ahead of you. God bless you. Thank you for being there.